I'm on my way to a place called Ware in Hertfordshire, where a viewer of the channel say they have a driving simulator with the clutch and gears. And I've only ever driven one driving simulator and that was many thousands of pounds. This is much cheaper. So I wanna find out how realistic it is and whether or not it's worth your time and money. I'm now at the location of my viewer and this is his setup. This is a Logitech G29 steering wheel with a H pattern gear shift and three pedals. You can get it new from around about 330 pounds or used from as little as 250 pounds. It's mated to this stand. Cheap stands are available from about 50 pounds, although this one is a good sturdy one, it's 100 pounds. The game is called City Car Driving. It's available on Steam from around about 20 pounds and you could use it on an ordinary laptop, although a nice big wide screen like we have here is better. But also, you can use virtual reality goggles. You could get a fancy chair if you like, but this kitchen chair seems to be doing the job. Let's give this a go then. So here are the pedals, there's the clutch. I have a H pattern shifter. It's very precise. It does spring to the middle nicely. There's no notch as you go into gear like there would be on a real gear shifter, but it does make a click to let you know. Before you get started, you do actually have to go to such lengths as putting your seatbelt on, which I remember is one of these buttons. That button makes a little sound to say the seatbelt's gone on. And then you've got to start the engine, make sure it's in neutral by holding this button down. You don't have to hold the clutch down to start the engine. And then this button here takes the handbrake off. Let's give this a go then. I've got these arrow buttons on the steering wheel. I can look left by pressing left. I can look right by pressing right, backwards by pressing down and up to change the view. Let's see what the gas pedal is like. I'm gonna press it a little bit now, and then it builds up. There is a bit of a delay, just like in a real car. If I do that again, if I press a little bit more, then it shoots up again like many real cars. Not all cars are like that, but many are. Let's see what the clutch is like. So clutch down first gear, I'll set some gas and find the bite point and see if holding on the bite point sinks the clutch with the flywheel or if it continues to slip. So it's slipping, it's not sinking, I'm holding the clutch on the bite point, holding the clutch on the bite point, it's still slipping. And in most cars, well not most cars, all real cars should I say, if you hold the clutch on the bite point, the clutch will eventually sink up with the flywheel and there'll be no slippage. But in this, you actually need to lift the clutch slowly off for it to work. And if you do that in a real car, if you don't lift it slow enough, it will kangaroo up the road. So that's not that realistic. Let's see what happens if I brake without pressing the clutch down. Does it stall? Yes, it has. Well, let's see what happens if I try to start the engine with it in gear. Does it shoot forwards? Yes, it does. So I have to hold the clutch down to start the engine. I'm still in first gear, so I don't need to change that. Let's see now what happens if I come off the clutch without any gas. Does it stall if I do it quickly? Yes, it does. All right, let's push the clutch down and start it. Let's come off the clutch slowly without any gas. Does it move away or does it stall? It does move away like many new cars will. All right, let's go and speed up and see what it's like to change gear. It's 2000 RPM. Clutch down off gas into gear two. Revs drop very quickly, more quickly than most real cars. Clutch to the bite point and a little bit of power. There we go, I'll try and change up at a higher RPM this time. This goes back three. Clutch down off gas into gear three. Clutch up carefully and a bit of gas. Now let's start braking. There's no feel in the brake pedal. Clutch down so I don't stall. So you kind of have to guess your braking visually by how much you are slowing down. You can change how much traffic there is. At the moment it's 20%. You can change how aggressive they are. At the moment it's quiet traffic and you can also change how many pedestrians there are. It's 10% at the moment. So let's get going and see what it's like to drive and do a couple of junctions. You may notice that I'm on the wrong side of the road if you're in the UK and unfortunately you cannot do it on the other side of the road. It has to be on the right side of the road. So clutch is down. I'm in first gear. A little bit of gas, handbrake's already off, bit of bite point, and then I slowly have to come off the clutch. And it's warning me on the right here in red that I started to drive without signaling, which is wrong. Yes, I should do that. There's a car behind. It's about two and a half thousand RPM there. Clutch down off gas into second gear and clutch up slowly to change 
the gear. Let's see how easy it is to upset the car. So I'm gonna change the third gear really quite aggressively. So clutch down, too many revs, into third, drop the clutch, and it was quite smooth, but you notice the head of the driver actually went back. Your perception within the car changed. I'll do that again. I'll go back down to second gear, and I'm gonna give loads of revs when I go into third, loads all the way up to five there, into third, drop the clutch, and you see his head moves back, and that's simulating that it's jerky. I've got to slow down for this bend here, just braking, and then I'm gonna steer. Oh yeah, steering, I have to say that's a really sharp turn, but not quite sensitive enough for me. I had to steer more than I'm used to. Let's see what happens if I move away with too much gas and lift the clutch up too quickly. There's a car behind waiting, and I'm coming for the clutch quickly now. Oh, yep, yeah, it wheel spins. Now that's what a real car will do. Let's see what happens if I try to change down from third to second. So I'm going up to third gear now. And let's see if I hold the clutch on the bike point after a downshift, if it rev matches for me. So off the gas, clutch down into second, holding the clutch on the bike point, does it rev match? No, it doesn't rev match. You have to slowly come off the clutch, which would normally be quite jerky in a car to do it that way. Normally, if you want a smooth downshift, you actually have to hold the clutch on the bike point and let the revs gradually rise. That's not riding the clutch. A lot of people think that's riding the clutch, but that's not. That's just using the clutch to help you rev match. It doesn't generate much heat. Oh, I want to look left or right. So I'm going to push the left arrow and there we go. I can see if traffic is coming. I should be signaling right here. Not really thinking about that. I'm just trying to learn how to use this simulation. I can see who's coming and I'm going to wait for this, what looks like a Mercedes C-Class and I'll go after them. A little bit of gas. And then, I think it's an E-class actually, if I can look right. Oh, that was a bit weird. I think I looked behind by accident and I can carry on. Signal doesn't self-cancel. That is an almost impossible turn with the steering wheel. I've got to cancel it myself by putting the right lever. I'm on the highway now. I've got a good view of the interior mirror. If I press the left arrow, I can see the left mirror. And I'm gonna go up to fifth gear and I'm gonna go down into second gear deliberately on purpose to see what happens. So here goes, Let's see what happens if I go into second gear. Actually, no, I'm only at 80 kilometers an hour, 85, so I'm gonna try and go into first gear. Let's see what happens if I go into a gear that's grossly, grossly too low. So clutch down into first, lift the clutch up, and the revs get very loud. It doesn't jump up or down or give you loads of engine braking gets very very loud what I will say about this game is the position is incredibly accurate where I need to position this car to be in my lane is very real and many new drivers struggle with that if you notice my steering wheel is just slightly right of my lane and that's what it would be like in a real car when you're in the middle of your lane or if your steering wheel is on the left of the car it will just be slightly left of your lane or another way that I like to do it is to feel like your left knee is in the middle of your lane. If you actually look at the image out of the window it looks like the car's way wider than the lane but it's not it just looks that way and that's what it looks like in real life so for that I think this simulation is really excellent if you struggle with lane positioning this simulation can help you. So there you go, I'm actually really impressed with this city car driving simulation and this setup, especially when you consider you could sell all this gear when you're finished with it and get most of your money back. It's well worth the practice, particularly when it comes to positioning. Many new drivers struggle with positioning their car in the road correctly and this game, or this simulation should I say, has that down to a T. And also how to drive a manual car, when to press the clutch, when to change gear. What I'm not so impressed with is the fact it's quite hard to see around. You have to press the arrow buttons, which is awkward, and you've got no feeling for the clutch or the brakes. And the clutch isn't totally realistic because if you hold it at the bite point, it doesn't sink. You do have to slowly come off it, which would lead to a jerky gear change in most cars. Well, if you think this video helps you learn a little bit about city car driving and how it could help you learn to drive, please give this video a thumbs up and check out Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, 
Collingwood can help because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy. And via the link at the moment, it's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. Also check out confused.com because you can fill out one quote form, get loads of quotes back from many insurers to see who's cheapest, and you can change the car on that quote as many times as you like to see how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio. A bonus about having this setup is that it also works on Forza Horizon, which is a lot of fun. As you can see. And actually, not that unrealistic. <laughs> well, at least for fast driving anyway.